Good day, brothers and sisters, friends and family. I hope that today we can bring you the message and bring you this word and help you draw closer to the Father and become alive in His Spirit. I welcome you again to another word, another session that um, today we're going to look at what God's children did and how it helped them to uh, welcome God into their lives and for God to be moving in their lives. Before we go there, I want us to go to the Lord in prayer as we begin this session. Heavenly Father, we just want to welcome you here. We want you to take over, to allow your Holy Spirit to move through us, to make your word alive in us and in those that are watching today. Let your spirit go out and bring the alive, the word that we give in the name of the Father. We just welcome you and we thank you for what you're going to do, Father, today in your name. Amen and amen. As we look today, I want us to look back into the Old Testament and look at what the children of Israel did and what God did and how he moved in their lives and what they did to to cause him to move in their lives. Sometimes it might not have been anything. And other times it was because of a work that they did. So as we begin this today, we're just going to do a little bit of talking about some of the children and what they did. We're going to look at, uh, some of them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What did they do that was so special that caused God to be there when they were cast into the fiery furnace and that his presence was there in the midst of that fire. And we're going to look at Daniel and how that when he was in the lion's den, how that uh, there was a presence there that caused those lions to not attack him and not kill him, but they laid down and rested with him while he was in there. And then we're going to look at Noah and why God did what he did and how he prepared Noah and talked to Noah and gave him the ability to build the ark, even though it had never rained before, there had never been a flood. Nothing had like that had ever occurred before. And we've got Moses and David and, and Solomon and why God did what he did in their lives. And those are just a few of the people that God worked in their lives as they were alive during the days of the Old Testament. You know, were they special as in, were they made special when God created them? Did he say, this is going to be somebody special? I, I don't think when we look at the scripture, all of those people were picked out and from birth were, God said, this is going to be somebody special. I think he knew it because he knows every one of us from the time and before we're even created. He knows what we're going to be, who we're going to be, and what he's called us to be. Now, we have a choice in that. You know, so many people say, well, if God's called us or God knows us before we're born, what difference does it make how we live our life? Because he's already prepared it. We have a choice. He gives us a choice. You know, he can, he can make us or he can say this child is going to be a miraculous worker for me if he chooses to be. You can choose not to be. He gives us that choice. He gives us that freedom. So no matter what, if you choose to ser serve God, you can choose to serve him to the fullness of what he's called you to do, or you can choose to serve him just, uh, let's just say just 
to following the line, so to speak. Well, I don't want to go to hell. I want to make it to heaven, so I'm going to just follow the line, so to speak. I'm not going to be some great person for God. I'm just going to make it to heaven. That's all I care about. And I believe that we have a choice when it comes to that even. Because the Bible talks about us going before the judgment seat and God's going to tell us, he's going to tell us what works we did. And he's going to tell us what we're going to be capable of when we get to heaven. So I believe that the scripture can verify or can prove what I'm saying here. If you do your research, that we are even going to be judged by what we've done on earth. So you have a choice of how much and what you receive when you get to heaven. Now, I personally, I want to get all I can get when I get to heaven. So I want to serve him to the best of my ability. I want to do all that he has called me or that he offers me to do. Now, I, I'm sure that I fall short. I have all of my life, and I'm not perfect by any means, but I want to try to be. So by looking at what the children of old did, I can learn by what they did and by what they didn't do. And I can make a choice of how close I want to be to God. So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at some of these individuals and see what they did or what they didn't do. Okay. But when we look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the main thing that they did was they, they prayed and they worshiped God and they served him and they listened. And, but the main thing they did was when the, the king built the idol and said everybody's to bow down and to worship this idol, they made a choice. They chose not to bow down because they served an almighty God. And he said, worship no other idol before me, serve only me and don't serve anybody else. And so when the king said, you'll bow down to this and you'll serve and worship me, they said, no. We serve a mighty God. And he says, we can't do that. And we're not going to. And no matter what the king said or what threats he made, nor what he, how he punished them, they refused to do what he told them to do. And in so doing, and you can look that up in scripture, but in so doing, they were cast into the fiery furnace. And the king not only put them in there, but he said, make it seven times hotter than it's ever been before. And he threw them in there. And even the guards that threw them in, they perished because of putting them in the fiery furnace. And as they went in there, all they were doing was worshiping God because they knew they served an almighty God. And they went in there not knowing for sure if they were going to come out or if they were going to perish in that fire, truthfully. But because of their faith and because of the way they loved God and they, they honored his rules and his laws, God chose to spare them. And he was with them in the fire. And here all the king's men and all the king was standing there and they were gazing in and they said, wait, we see a fourth man and he looks like God and whoa. And so when they called him out, they said they didn't even smell like fire. They said they, they was not even scorched hair on them. There was nothing that said they had been in that fire yet. The, the, the guards that threw them in had perished because of the heat of the fire. And because of that, the king had to make a choice and had to say, whoa, you serve an almighty God. And so their example and their choice and their choosing to serve and to worship and to obey what God called them to do made God choose 
to protect them, even in the midst of a fire, even in the midst of what should have killed them, he protected them. You know, God gave them a, a, a miracle. And he still is a miracle working God today, people. And then we go and we look at Daniel and him being in the lion's den. And, you know, we see how that Daniel, he believed and he trusted God with his whole heart and soul and mind. He spent his days speaking with God in prayer, fasting, studying, and listening to God. He desired God's heart. He wanted to serve God with everything in him, and God spoke with Daniel and spent time with Daniel. And because he refused to do what the king and what the world said he had to do, they threw him in the lion's den. And once again, he went in with a heart believing and praising God and worshiping his almighty God. And because he went in there, no, God didn't show up in, in a form at that time, but his spirit came upon those lines and they didn't even bark or growl or, or snap at him. They laid down and rested with him. And, you know, that would be such an awesome thing to see. And Daniel spent the night in with the lions, and they, they, was, they didn't bother him. We had that power also. God gives us that authority over even the animals. If we need it, if we need it, and we believe in our God, we have that power. And then there's Noah, and we're going to go to Scripture with Noah. You know, Noah... There, they, he had not seen any rain, never heard of rain at that point in time in, in history. Water was just there, it came up out of the ground, and there was the dew that fell on the ground, and that was about it. But the world was so terrible that it was just, the God was so ashamed of what he had created. But there was one man that God seen as a right man or as a just man, and that was Noah. And because of Noah, he chose to save just that one person and his, ch and his children. He offered to save his son-in-laws too, but they chose not to. But um, he chose... Um, Sorry, I got my stories crossed there a little bit because I went I went back to um, Lot. Excuse me. Uh, Noah's son-in-laws did save, get saved, um, but um, God chose to save him and his kids, and so He told Noah how to build an ark. But because of Noah, and we're going to look at what God talked or what God said about Noah, and we're going to go to Genesis chapter 6, and we're going to look at verses 8 and 9. So if you got your Bibles, and I hope you do, well, I want you to go to Genesis chapter 6, verses 8 and 9, and it says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just ma man and perfect in his generations. See, God considered him perfect. And Noah walked with God. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. So uh, he was one out of all the people that God seen as a perfect man. And his generation was um, perfect. And he walked with God. And because he walked with God, God chose to save the human race.
If it hadn't been for Noah, we wouldn't be here today as far as I, what I interpret and what I see the scripture to say before that. If you read back a little bit on that, he would have destroyed the whole, whole country. He would have destroyed, I'm sorry, the whole world. But he chose because of Noah and because Noah was a, was a, a, a just man and God seen favor with him. And because Noah served God, he worshiped God, he believed God. And so we, as we look at these different people, let's go back and look at Lot. Okay. Lot's a little different story because of Lot's um, lineage. Lot was part of the children of Israel. He went to, um, Sodom and Gomorrah because he chose to go there. Um, and so because he chose to go there, then God seen that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was a terrible place and he chose to destroy it. And because Lot was of the children of Israel and he was part of the lineage that was blessed, God sent the angels there to find, try to find 10 good, righteous people, and he couldn't find them, or they couldn't find them. So they went, and they literally had to take Lot and his family by their hands and lead them out, because they didn't even want to go. And, and they had to lead them out to keep them from being destroyed and tell them, go out of this valley, because we're about to destroy it. So it was not because of Lot being such a great man and he wasn't uh, because of anything more than God showed him favor because of his lineage. That was the only one that I'm going to talk about today that was not by any means doing anything that showed him favor other than his lineage and what God chose. So sometimes it doesn't matter what you're doing. Sometimes God just cho chooses to show you favor. And for that, I say you are blessed. But if you want to get close to God and you want to see God move in your life, if we do like these others that it talks about in the scriptures that we've looked at and the, the people we've talked about, you've got to get and spend time with God. You've got to get to know him and you've got to get on your face and you got to talk to him and you got to listen to hear his voice because he does talk if you listen real close and you got to get into the word and see what it says. Because unlike those people who didn't have the word like we've got, the written word, they had to just rely on the voice of God. We've got the written word, which takes us back and shows us those things and prepares us and gives us. And then we've got Jesus who died on the cross for us and shed his blood for us. And then we got the Holy Spirit, which they didn't have that lived within them. We've got that that we can receive to live within us. And it prepares us and it guides us and it leads us. So we've got so many more things that we can rely on and we can can have to lead us and guide us and draw us closer to God and that can provide us a way so that we can see miracles more and unlike what they seen in the days of old. We are blessed. We are in a world that's blessed. If only we will just draw nigh unto him and he will draw nigh unto us. Seek and ye shall find. Read the word. Pray daily. Ask for his will. Ask for his guidance. And do what he asks you to do or what he tells you to do. Listen and he will. He will draw nigh unto you and you will be able to see mountains moved like you've never seen before. Brothers, sisters, friends and family, I ask and I just tell you, please, please, please get before God like you never have before because time is coming of hand and you better be ready. And the only way to do it is to seek God more than you ever have before. I know this has been a crazy message and it's jumped a little bit and I apologize 
not because of what I said, but just because of some of the craziness in it. And some of y'all might not been able to follow me, but you can always rewind this and run it back and forth. I'm going to pray with you today. And I want you to come back. I want you to listen. If you need me, if you need a prayer request, there's going across the bottom of the screen. There's ways to get in contact with me. Please let me know what you think. Please contact me if you need some prayer, because I will pray for you. If you have anything you need, let me know because I love you all with all of my heart and you're always in my prayers even if I don't know anything about you. I pray for everybody that watches this and you all please come back and watch us again. As we end this, I just want to take you to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just ask that you move in the lives that are watching this. If they need healing, I just right now speak healing into their lives. And Lord, you said that anything we ask on this earth, it's done in heaven. And I'm standing on that word. And by your stripes, we are healed. And I'm standing on that word, Lord Jesus. I just speak healing into lives. If they need a financial touch, Lord Jesus, you provide what they need. Provide the way. Prove to them that you are a God of miracles, that you are still the same today as you was back in the days of old. And as you are in you will always be. Father, I just ask that you move in their lives. Make this word that we've spoke today and that we've read today become reality in their lives. And I believe this, and I ask that you go before me in the name of Jesus. I thank you for all that you've done, all that you're going to do, and all that you're doing right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, and I love you, Lord, in your name. Amen and amen. Brothers, sisters, friends, and family, I love you. Thank you for watching. Come back and see us again and let us know if you need something. It's across the bottom of the screen. See you later. Bye now.